Hello everybody, this is Kate Sinashne from Dedicated. I'm at reInvent, AWS reInvent in Las Vegas. I stopped by the Star Tree booth to talk to Chad. Chad, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I want to start with, you know, what do you do for Star Tree? And then talk to us about what does Star Tree actually do? Yeah, I work in product marketing and DevRel here at Star Tree. Star Tree is a real-time analytic database. We really specialize in fast, fresh analytics so you can ingest data as fast as you can stream it okay. we crunch it super fast and then our real superpower is we can support millions of users so very high queries per second so if you're building a customer facing app where you might have thousands or tens of thousands of users that want insights on the data that you provide we're the right platform for you awesome i love that and how do you guys partner with aws yeah, so we partner with AWS in several different ways. One is obviously as a, as a cloud, we're offered in their marketplace. We also have a free tier that's hosted within Amazon Web Services. We also integrate with a lot of their tooling like Amazon Kinesis for streaming data in. And most recently, we've been here talking at the event about how we're embracing Bedrock for more generative AI features within Star Tree. Great, yeah. Every time I stop by the booth, it's been super busy, and I always see you yeah. chatting with customers. Everyone wants one of these. Obviously, I took one from my kids. So yeah, that's thank Dash, you. our mascot. Oh, I didn't even know Dash. I didn't Dash know it had a, a name. Yeah, it's got a name. Meet Dash, everybody. So I recently read there was a press release that you guys um, released, and you had a bunch of new features. So I wanted to talk about a couple of them. Let's start with Plausible's ingestion. How does that actually help your customers and what does that mean? Yeah, so StarTree is based on an Apache open source project called Pino. And Pino is really excellent at scaling these large ingestion analytics types workloads. But one of the issues that our customers have found when they're really pushing the limits of it is at a certain point, there'd be some delays in ingestion, hence a pause. Uh -huh. And what we've been able to do with this most recent innovation is remove that pause, hence pause list, so we can really deliver on that promise of real time, even at the highest ends of scale. Wow, and that, that makes sense. The pause makes sense there. Um, the, the other feature I wanted to learn more about was RBAC. What, yeah. what does that stand for? What is, how does that actually help customers? Yeah, RBAC, role-based access controls. Now, if you've been in the database world or analytic database world for a while, you might say, well, that's not new. Most databases have this. And that's true. But when you're dealing with real-time analytics, which is still an emerging market, yeah. There's some challenges that you have in doing things like security in real time that aren't a challenge when you're doing things in the batch world. And so it's been one of those things that have prevented more wide scale adoption of real time analytics. A lot of customers are obviously sensitive around security. A little and bit. So yeah. Our engineers have really figured out now how to provide these fine grained security controls within the Pinot database to really you know, ensure security across a variety of different roles. All right, great. Thanks so much for sharing that. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is you have this challenge going on. It's the data reckoning, mission impossible. Yeah. I know there are five challenges. So t talk more about that. What's the story there? And what has been the response from the developer community? Yeah, mission impossible. It's this coding challenge. And really what it is, is it's a way for people that want to learn about real-time analytics um, to you know, have these tutorials, to have these environments set up where you have real-time streams already coming in. We've built a great, robust community around helping others with the challenges. And not only are you learning new skills, but for every competition, there's a grand prize. Um, some One of the grand prizes was actually a trip here to AWS reInvent. Yeah, that's one awesome. Of the winners, which is pretty cool. Um, the, la the latest and final challenge is really around building a chat bot Okay. Using real time data, using the vector in search capabilities uh, of, of Pino. And so that one's also gotten a great response. As you can imagine, a lot of people looking of to course. acquire skills around generative AI. Exactly. I think it's so great when companies host these kind of ha hackathons, coding challenges, because a lot of people we hear about building a chatbot or using Gen AI, but right. this sort of makes you use it and try it out and build your own chatbot, which is yeah, great. Yeah, that's right. It can be kind of daunting, right? You're reading yeah. these papers and blogs and here you got step by step and can most importantly, you know, help from uh, Star Tree engineers or the community to really help you build your first chatbot.
Great. Well, it's very exciting. So I want to ask a final question here. Where can people go to learn more about Star Tree and about this challenge as well? Yeah, obviously, if you're here at reInvent, stop by our booth. But if you're checking this out after reInvent, uh, you can go to startree.ai and, um, and, and engage with us that way. Amazing. Well, Chad, thank you so much for your time. Likewise. Thanks.